Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for August 8th, 2024. There's an old joke that's often told by diplomats when they sit around over their cocktails uh, and discuss the policies of the United States, and the joke is, why are there never coups in the United States? The answer, because there's no U.S. Embassy in the United States. Now, that is an old joke, and there's some certainly some truth to it. The U.S. is definitely involved in uh, carrying out coups everywhere around the world, interfering in elections, uh, disrupting government, and so on. But there have been coups in the United States. I just wrote an article that I'll be posting tomorrow uh, that's titled, Soft Coup, Party Establishment Sacrifices Biden to Save the Permanent War Policy. And it goes through how undemocratic the U.S. election process is when you drive out a president who, granted, shouldn't be in the White House because he's demented, but drive him out in a non-democratic way, a non-transparent way, and then impose his supposed replacement also through non-democratic means. But I'm also bringing it up because today is the 50th anniversary of the speech given in 1974 when Richard Nixon announced that he was going to resign the next day because of new leaks that showed that he was aware of the Watergate burglary and that he lied to the American public about it, about what he knew. Now, what's important about this is that the removal of Nixon was a result of what some call a botched burglary at the Watergate Hotel into the Democratic Party headquarters. But botched, it was done by top CIA operatives. The investigation, which was involved in the cover-up, was done by the FBI. So you had the CIA and the FBI setting up the President of the United States and then leaking to the Washington Post, which was the main newspaper covering the story, the the lying that was being done from the White House. And it was only a matter of time before Nixon was forced out of office. And getting rid of Nixon allowed for a shift in policy, which with the election of Jimmy Carter in 1976, brought into power the Trilateral Commission operation, the 1980s project, which included Paul Volcker's commitment to controlled disintegration of the U.S. economy, and Brzezinski's idea of the Islamic card, that the U.S. should support Islamic fundamentalist terrorists around the world as a way to undermine the existence of the Soviet Union. So the Watergate operation was a setup. It was, in a sense, a soft coup to remove a president to shift the policy. Now, the policy was not so different. It's just that what happened under Carter is that there was more direct confrontation between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, which was the intention of the military-industrial financial complex at the time, trying to undo what had been done by Kennedy at the end of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, the reason to bring this up is that the power of this corporate media, which was involved in this, has increased over time. And it's been instrumental in cementing the control of the military industrial financial complex through lies and censorship. And this is what has created the narrative bubble that controls the thinking of most Americans and most people living in Europe today as the media in Europe is just as bad. And in fact, you have less of the podcasts and other forms on the internet of the U.S. Uh, that does give people access to some truth. But it's true that Americans and European citizens are living under a bubble controlled by this media phenomena. Now, a growing number of people are aware of it because, as I said, of the podcasters and others who fight to bring the truth. But what we have seen is a loss of trust in politicians and in the media. Now, one example of the narrative bubble 
is the line that the U.S. is a democracy. Well, in fact, we're a republic which uses democratic means to elect our representatives, but it's not a democracy. Now, furthermore, the idea that the U.S. is the leading defender of democracy against tyranny in the world is a complete fraud. We're defending the government of Zelensky in Ukraine. There's no freedom there. There's no alternative political parties. There's no election. There's no alternative media. There's not even an opposition media. And meanwhile, we're providing hundreds of billions of dollars in supposedly to fight for democracy that ends up in the hands of the U.S. military industrial complex and in the pockets of the kleptocrats of Kiev of the Zelensky regime. So where's the democracy? Then in the U.S., we've just seen the, the coronation, as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. called it, of Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate of the Democratic Party without receiving a single vote in any primary. That is, as in 2016, when they rigged the primaries against Bernie Sanders. 2020, when the Democrats rigged the primary process so that Biden would be the last man standing. And now this time they did the same thing. No opposition made it clear that Biden would get all the votes. And then once he was forced out, they bring in Harris and are now building this idea that she's the great hero of the nation, that she's bringing new life to the political process and on and on and on. What she's really doing is bringing hundreds of millions of dollars from Silicon Valley, Hollywood, bankers, and others to have create an impression of an unstoppable campaign, but to do what? To make sure that the permanent war policy is left in place. So that's American democracy. Now, in terms of the censorship, let me just bring up a point. I, I don't have the full story yet. None of us do, but we'll get it. There were uh, police raids and an FBI raid on the home of Scott Ritter yesterday. Ritter is an outspoken opponent of the permanent war party, of this corporate bureaucracy. Hopefully he's okay. We'll find out more about it. But this gives you some insight into how they try to control the process. So the question is, how do you restore the trust? Now, this was the topic of my discussion with, one of the topics of my discussion with Helga Zeppler-Rusch yesterday. And I'm going to link in the description box the uh, video of that discussion. But what she talked about is that the lack of trust is due to the fact that the people in charge are not trustworthy. But how do you restore trust? And that's why she's issued a call for a council of reason of senior statesmen and women who are with beyond the, the stage of ambition and arrogance and are able to present an, a, a discussion process, participate in the discussion process over what's necessary for the nation in the future. So I, I want you to, to look at that. There's also an article on the last Friday International Peace Coalition meeting, especially the discussion around the Council of Reason. Now, what is necessary is for you, the citizen, to help us pop the narrative bubble, help us build a Council of Reason, and help us uh, distribute through the population the truthful report of what's happening and what must be done. That's the commitment of the LaRouche organization is to provide the information and the intelligence that's not filtered through the narrative, but presented directly to you and you can use it to organize others. So that's why I want you to watch the video with, with Helga from yesterday and then read about the Council of Reason and see what you can do to help us bring together these senior statesmen and women who can help us break the power of the narrative control and the actual physical control of government by these illegitimate corporate cartels. So thanks for joining me.
I'll be back again tomorrow. The big question, what can we do about it? If we have the power to influence the course of history as individuals, then each of us has a corresponding moral responsibility to muster within ourselves those capacities which enable us to do our part in shaping the course of civilization. Now, under that rubric, I say, what kind of news is newsworthy? The only news that's worth having is news which performs those functions, which enables government, which enables you as an individual and so forth, better to understand what is happening to this planet, to understand what the developments are that are shaping the course of history. And finally, to indicate to you the facts which you need to look at so that you can judge what it is that you might be able to do which can contribute to bringing about a solution, an escape from the collapse of civilization. This is no pipe dream. This is no fantasy. This is real. <laughs>